Anime is no stranger to horror. Anime created in the 80s and 90s is definitely no stranger to horror. And anime that reached North America during that era is 100% no doubt no stranger to graphically violent, blood-smeared horror. Thing is, this was the time when the West dominantly considered animation to be something that catered to children. So when Japanese animation traveled to the United States, the audience wanted the farthest possible thing from a family-appropriate show. As a result, most of the anime that got licensed to North America was also very violent and often horrifying in nature. But within the realm of the horror genre, there are still a lot of anime that never hit mainstream success. Or rather, they were never made to be mainstream considering their violent and often brutally grotesque nature. But this is the subject of today's video, as we hope to dive into 11 horrifying animated works from the 80s and 90s. Before diving into this content, we'd like to make a very small request to our viewers. Please subscribe to our channel, like and comment on our videos, and press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload new content. We would be so grateful and we would pay you back by bringing you the best nerdy content in the future. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Wicked City, 1987. 1987 anime film Wicked City enters the territory of action horror and dark fantasy, with Madhouse taking the reins of the project. The story is set towards the latter half of the 20th century, presenting to us a world where the human world and the demon world coexist with each other. This demon world, also known as the Black World, is an alternate dimension home to demons. But not all humans know about it. The only thing that helps the two dimensions exist together in peace is a treaty. As a result, secret agents, or the Black Guard, maintain the boundary between the two worlds. Of course, it's not alien for anime to bring demons into the foray, but the horror elements in Wicked City go a little beyond the average protagonist family gets killed by a Michael Jackson lookalike who turns his sister into a demon scenario. For starters, we see a demon named Kaneko, who is masquerading as a human by the way, steal the bodily fluid of the man she is hooking up with after she tries to kill him. The film is filled to the brim with graphic displays of lovemaking and demonic harlots who can absorb others into their bodies being liberally presented. It invokes a sense of intimate horror that terrifies so many of us on a daily basis, because what could be worse than finding out your partner for the night is a literal spider demon who wants to steal your baby maker. Mermaid Scar, 1993. Originally known as the Ningyo series in Japanese, Mermaid Scar is a 1993 anime written by Rumiko Takahashi. The story of the show revolves around the ancient legend of eating mermaid flesh, which can allegedly make one immortal if they're lucky. However, there are greater chances of death or turning into a damned creature called a lost soul than there are chances of becoming immortal. But of course, many people have taken the gamble and been dealt the shorter end of the stick. This brings us to the immortal protagonist, Yuta, who has been alive for over 500 years and traveled all across Japan as he has tried to meet with those whose lives have been ruined by the consumption of mermaid flesh. Within the mermaids though, there is the practice of eating young, immortal women, because it is supposed to help them regain their youth. This in turn creates a cycle of one needing to eat the flesh of another for their personal benefits. The story also dives into the realistic horror of how women are always made to take the brunt of misery in society. Young women were isolated and fed mermaid flesh, which had a much greater chance of turning them into a damned creature. In return, if they did happen to become immortal, their meat benefited female mermaids who wished to retain their youth. Reality is not far-fetched because throughout cultures, women have been ostracized or literally hunted down. Ironically, many of the perpetrators of this have often been other women, and Mermaid Scar blends myth with reality so well that you'll end up doubting your dinner the next time you see it, as well as the woman serving it to you. Pet Shop of Horrors Matsuri Akino's Pet Shop of Horrors takes us straight into Jose territory, which has always enjoyed the reputation of being more realistically dark and mature than the commonplace shown in anime. The anime finds its shady protagonist in Count D, an eccentric proprietor who runs the notorious Pet Shop of Horrors. This mysterious shop is located in the heart of Chinatown in Los Angeles and is no stranger to attracting patrons. But as the name suggests, this is not your average pet shop that sells catnip and cute puppies. Some people just aren't satisfied with an average cat or dog as their companion. Instead, they find their ideal pet in this shop, which sells rare pets that have humanoid appearances. But what's even more horrifying are the contracts one has to sign to acquire this special pet. Depending on the pet, the clauses of the contract will vary, but either way, a similar fate will befall those who break the contract. 
and in no way can they blame the pet shop for this. Needless to say, this unfortunate fate is very much the death of the customer and the show has portrayed the deaths of 10 men and 2 women in its run. And yet, it's not the death that's horrifying. It's the gory horror prevalent throughout the show alongside the humanoid pets that teach the owners this deadly lesson. This show is everything that western pet horror movies aspire to be and then a lot more than just some. Demon City of Shinjuku 1988 Japanese horror film Demon City of Shinjuku, directed by Yoshiaki Kawajiri, is considered to be the father of the Senki urban fantasy genre in Japan. It presents a Shinjuku, which has become a living hell due to a horrifying incident that took place 10 years ago. During that incident, a human turned demon named Rebi Ra fought Genichiro Izayoi and killed him. It all happened because Rebi Ra, who was the student of Aguni Rai, craved demonic power. After defeating Aguni's other student, Genichiro, Rebi Ra attained demonic power and triggered the demon quake. This unusual earthquake destroyed Shinjuku Juku, making it a haven for malicious creatures such as monsters and demons. The film presents to us demons of various sorts, including spider demons that can give you the creeps. The fights are graphic, bloody, and gory, with the protagonist Kiyoya, who is Genichiro's son, finding himself in the eye of the storm time and again. He almost becomes a sacrifice to allow the demons to enter the human world as well, but you're going to have to see the film to understand how terrifying this truly was. Like Wicked City, Demon City of Shinjuku dabbles with the ever present sexual themes and nudity prevalent in 90s anime, although not to a similar extent, considering there isn't as much show in this 1988 film. However, it maintains its status as a visually horrifying movie with its fair share of ruined corpses and severed limbs. Akira, 1988. Easily one of the most recognizable names in the world of cyberpunk anime, the 1988 movie Akira, directed by Katsuhiro Otoma, finds a well-deserved spot in this list of horror anime. The story is set in the dystopian future of 2019, well back when 2019 was the future. Protagonist Shotaro Kaneda appears as the leader of a biker gang, while his childhood friend Tetsuo Shima finds himself as the wielder of incredible telekinetic powers following a motorcycle accident. This dystopian Neo-Tokyo is the result of an explosion from World War III. It is now plagued with corruption, gang violence, anti-government riots, and terrorism. However, the cool premise is not close to being the best thing about this film. It's the characters, the emotional connection between the characters, and the emotional construction in the film that adds the real wonder. And the real horror comes not just in the form of body horror, which Akira has become iconic for as well. The relationship between the two best friends soon becomes a power struggle and a need for recognition from the authority. Meanwhile, scientists have found out about people with psychic abilities and are keeping them under wraps to exert absolute control over them. Of course, the government, military, and the police are not the biggest allies to the citizens, which is a theme prevalent across the cyberpunk genre. Apart from graphic fights, gore, and blood, the movie also does not shy away from depicting grotesque body horror, with telekinetic powers going beyond one's control and causing more than a fair bit of tragedy. Vampire Hunter D, 1985. The 1985 fantasy horror film Vampire Hunter D has often been regarded as a dark future science fiction romance. Set in the extreme future of 12,090 AD, this world has experienced a nuclear holocaust already. Within the film, a woman hires a human vampire hybrid to protect her against a vampire lord. The film is filled to the brim with grotesque deaths where characters have their heads smashed, are victims to their bodies turning into fountains of their own blood, or their eyes being unceremoniously separated from their skulls. And although vampire killings and fights against vampires are prevalent across less horrifying formats, Vampire Hunter D attains a spot in this list because of its grotesque depictions of this theme, which are unlike anything else you're going to find. Though the animation style of this movie is exceedingly beautiful, juxtaposing that with the terrifying fate that the titular Vampire Hunter D has to save his client from will show you just how scary this movie can actually get. Or you could just watch it and tell us how right we are down in the comments below. Urotsuki Doji, Legend of the Overfiend, 1989. Probably the craziest entry on this list, Urotsuki Doji, Legend of the Overfiend, is an erotic horror manga by Toshio Meida that dives into blending the supernatural with dark humor and erotica. Meanwhile, its anime counterpart, directed by Hideki Takayama, deviates from the already monstrous nature of the manga to add elements of sadomasochism and sexual violence that have not been depicted in the source. Japanese animation has presented to us 
a lot of sexually weird things, such as their personal brand of hentai, with hentai literally referring to a weirdo, and of course, their infamous tentacle obsession, which please just don't ask us to explain. The Urotsoki Doji Legend of the Overfiend anime makes it more horrifying as it portrays tentacle assault. The premise is set in a world where the human world is united with the demon world and the man-beast world once every 300,000 years. Protagonist Jaku Amano, who is a man-beast, wishes to ensure safety to the future of all three worlds by finding the Chojin. However, several demons stand in his way to prevent him from accomplishing his mission. This results in a mad fest of violence and visceral visuals that the women of the film fall victim to. There is maiming. There is mutilation. There are visceral assaults where tentacles violate an unwilling woman, which also happens really early in the film. Urotsuki Doji lets us know its true nature early on, and it can make H.P. Lovecraft seem tame with how horrifying it truly is. Helsing, 1997. Kora Hirano's Helsing is a series that introduces us to a secret organization in England known as Helsing. This organization fights vampires, ghouls, and all sorts of monsters to protect Queen and Country. Created by Abraham Van Helsing and currently led by his descendant, Sir Integra Fairbook Wingates Helsing, the organization is unique in the sense that it has the most renowned vampire of all time, Dracula, doing their bidding as Alucard. Of course, we don't want to tell you how this happened if you don't already know, because it is best to find out on your own by watching the series. However, the vampires are definitely not the worst creatures in the stories, considering its involvement with the Nazis or some of its remnants who wish to revive Nazi Germany. And how do they want to do it? By using vampires, of course. It revels in gore, blood, and violence to the point you'll question if Alucard is supposed to be the protagonist or the antagonist, making it deserving of an entry onto our list. Perfect Blue, 1997. If you aren't well versed with the culture of music idols prevalent in East Asia, Perfect Blue might be slightly difficult for you to understand, so let us help. There are certain companies that recruit people either via auditions based on singing and dancing, or by street casting them. These companies then train them to be idols that sing and dance on stage with others while being part of a group, but it often goes deeper than that. Many of them have crafted personas that cater to the opposite gender. With constant fan interaction, Actions they are made to create parasocial relationships with their fans, creating masses of obsessed fans who will go to any lengths and spend their money on you to support your career. In certain cases, the obsession goes too far, and the obsessed fan, who feels entitled to their favorite idol, stalks them relentlessly. These obsessed fans can also harm idols if and when necessary, especially if said idol is revealed to be dating someone, which breaks their fantasy of dating the idol. Satoshi Kon's Perfect Blue bases itself on this as it follows the life of Mima Kiragoe from a J-pop girl group named Cham. Mima leaves her group and goes on to become an actor, where she sheds her previously pristine image as she has to do explicit scenes in strip clubs and romantically interact with men. Meanwhile, an obsessed fan, Mimania, cannot bear to witness the rebrand of Mima, as she is not the pure idol he once loved. The story dives into the territory of psychological thriller and horror, as it shows how the idol industry blurs the lines between reality and delusions. At the same time, it brings in a third aspect, with Mima's manager, Rumi Hadaka being unable to witness the ex-idol go through the process of recording terrifying scenes as an actress, even though the company is profiting off of it. It all results in Mima eventually cracking from pressure while there is a prevalent descent into madness and what initially looks like schizophrenia proves to be something much more rooted in reality. Of course, there is the stereotypical blood and gore, but the reason why Perfect Blue falls under the category of horror is much deeper than that. Reality does not have demons, but what Mima goes through is realistically quite possible. Serial Experiments Lane, 1998. One of the most hard to explain entries on this list, the 1998 cyberpunk anime Serial Experiments Lane is another story that blurs the lines between different worlds. In this realm, it's the line between the real world and the virtual world that gets convoluted as the movie progresses. The story follows the introverted teenage protagonist Lane Iwakura, who begins receiving emails from her classmate who has already died from suicide. The latter convinces Lane to enter the Wired, which is basically a digital landscape like the internet. But with time, Lane gets more and more integrated within the Wired, and that's when things start getting weird and messed up. Lane finds herself in the darkest corners of the internet, 
hears of a raging party girl who apparently looks just like her, becomes a part of killings, and gets observed and attacked from afar by mysterious men in black. Eventually, the virtual world seeps into her reality and human silhouettes turn into statics. Her identity is at risk because she learns secrets about herself that turn her sense of self upside down. It also raises questions about technology that can be truly frightening. Fifty years ago, we could have never imagined the technology we have today. The internet is nothing short of a miracle, and 50 years from now, we will have access to technology that we cannot even imagine today, unless we classify it under miracles and magic. This makes serial experiments realistically horrifying. Boogie Pop Phantom, 1999. And finally, we close this list with the 1990 film Boogie Pop Phantom, which joins its predecessor in being a hard to explain anime. Written by Sadayuki Morai, who wrote Perfect Blue, and with character designs by Shigeyuki Suga, who was the key animator in Serial Experiments Lane, Boogie Pop Phantom does not stray far away from themes of escapism, loss of reality, and an eerie atmosphere. In this story, the rampage of a serial killer has taken a toll on a small prefecture located outside Tokyo. After a mysterious beam of light touched the sky, several teenagers gained supernatural powers. However, with the recurrence of the disappearance of people just like it used to be during the time of the serial killer, people now blame the supernatural being called the Boogie Pop Phantom. The usage of fog filters and sepia colors throughout the anime make it creepier than necessary. Then there's the eerie soundtrack and the character design that makes the character characters look more like real people and less like anime characters. For example, the titans in Attack on Titan are far creepier to look at than the average giant in anime, primarily because the facial design is more human. The titans look less like anime characters and more like humans, and it clearly does the trick in creating the necessary shock value. And the USP of Boogie Pop Phantom is how terrifying the confusion throughout the story can be. There's much to know, but you just can't figure out what it is. And as any true fan of the horror genre will know, the first and most true fear in the world is the fear of the unknown. Marvelous Verdict! It's not like horror anime as intense as the ones on this list are extremely common like battle anime or romance anime, but that's exactly what makes it even more special, especially when it's good. To be fair, horror movies in live action have often failed to scare many people, primarily because we already know that it's not real. What horror anime often does is that it bases the horrors of its story on reality leaving a bigger impact than an absolutely fictional premise ever will. With that, today's video comes to an end. What did you think of these 11 anime? Did you enjoy the video? If so, then don't forget to like and comment below. Until then, see you next time and have a marvelous day!